my mentor is, I mean, she's about 11 years older than me. She does not look anything like me. Like, she's like this teeny tiny white lady. <laughs> and she just loves the Lord. And mm -hmm. uh, she's helped me learn how to read my Bible. And she's fed me. And her before I got married, it was her family and her kids running around. And she just let me come and sit at their table and eat with them. And now that I have my kids, that's what I do. I just invite people, you know, like we as a church, we get to model what it looks like for everyone else. Like this is what it looks like. It doesn't matter what you look like, what generation you're in. Mm -hmm. If someone's older than me or younger than me, like I can still welcome them to my home. And I learned that from women who are willing to mentor me. And so I'm hoping I can do that, this, like the same thing for other people. Well, and so what would be a tangible way? What if we um, go to a church where everybody kind of thinks the same, looks the same, acts the same? What would be the first step? Um, do you have suggestions? Like for us, uh, we started with my husband's employment and I started with some of the areas that I was working in. And then we looked to our kids school and they started inviting some kids over um, from varying backgrounds. And it was such a special time to get to know lots of different, different people. What are some tangible, do you guys have some tangible suggestions? The mentoring ministry I started with the millennial girls started because there were young girls visiting the church and I knew my church didn't have a ministry for them. And if I didn't reach out to them, they weren't going to stay. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. and um, you know, this was someone that just came to church one time. And, and I was like, do you want to go to lunch? Because I know she's hungry because it's about to be lunchtime. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we just went out to eat that time. But after that, I started inviting her into my home. And, and we developed a long-term relationship. And there were several, you know, young women like that. So I think when we have people that take the risk, that's what it is in our culture yeah. today, mm -hmm. in a pluralistic yes. society, to come to church, that they don't leave feeling overlooked. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I am always reminding myself... Um, the reward comes from taking the risk. Mm -hmm. If you're not willing to step out, I mean, Jesus mm -hmm. is calling us to get out of our comfort zone, to extend mm -hmm. our boundaries. And there's such sweet reward with that when we do it. It means our table looks more like the table that he sat around. Mm -hmm. It means our table represents more what the kingdom of heaven is going to look like. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like we talked about this week in the study, um, it is one of the major tools that he uses mm -hmm. for discipleship and evangelism. So our table looks more like the kingdom of heaven brought to earth. And that is every tribe, 